While playing Dead Rising, have you ever wondered something like, how many zombies would it take to literally break the game? Okay, well, maybe not that exact idea, though it is pretty interesting to see, doing something like this clearly puts a pretty serious load on the game's engine. It was never intended to do this, and while it lags like crazy, it's pretty impressive, at least for Xbox 360. You see, an issue I've had with Dead Rising since forever is that in most cases, this game isn't really pushing the physics engine. I mean, of course, aside from the fantastic zombie count on screen and all of the complicated collision detection that the engine has to constantly do, but aside from that, it's really just a giant mall. Nothing in here moves. So there's this huge unexplored territory of this game that you could never normally see because the physics engine isn't really being used to its fullest extent. So that got me thinking, why don't we, in 2018, finally see what this game's engine is capable of? If we were to add things into the game that actually use the physics engine extensively, how will it hold up? Will the game behave normally, or will it all fall apart? Well, who knows? <laughs> Let's find out. Now, despite the game using very little of its physics engine capabilities, it still does some pretty neat tricks here and there, such as playing a round of bowling in North Plaza, or even more decorative things such as stacking wine barrels on top of each other. But hitting a couple cones with a bowling ball isn't really stressing the engine, so I think we have to step it up a notch. Now, vehicles in Dead Rising are interesting, to say the least. No other object in the game behaves the way vehicles do. So some pretty strange things happen when you put vehicles in a place they shouldn't be or do things with a vehicle that shouldn't be done. An example of this would be putting a vehicle in the mall. It ends up being in a setting that it isn't tested to be in. Motorcycles have the ability to spawn in the mall, but the areas they spawn in limit what they can do. So let's break some of that limitation for a minute. There's this weird platform in Entrance Plaza that you can jump up to, and I'm going to spawn a bicycle up here. Why? Well, what happens when you drive off? Usually the amount of air that you get from a jump isn't really considerable, but this should be major. And yeah, nothing really groundbreaking, at least that was until I later accidentally fell backwards off the platform and discovered there's even more wacky stuff back here. Frank can't normally go into this bit of geometry for some reason, but the bike can. Also, if you hop, you get stuck in this animation state. I found that you can ramp up the side of the ceiling, and oddly, if you jump outside to the parking lot, the bike breaks. I later discovered that there's an item kill barrier in the parking lot, which is interesting. So if we hop out here, we lose it. I also tried a skateboard, but it wasn't really interesting. It can't enter that void in the ceiling, so there's not much to see. Now continuing with wacky vehicle stuff, I decided why not spawn a car in the mall? Because if we can have a motorcycle in North Plaza, why not a car? That'll do. Now, surprisingly, the car will behave pretty normally in North Plaza, aside from some walls you can hit which gets the car stuck, but I did want to try going over the bike ramps with the car, which just absolutely broke it. I then later tried to clear the jump from one end of the fountain to the other, which proved to be a lot harder than it looks with the car. In both attempts that I made, the car would freak out after hitting something and fall through the floor halfway. Then I got the idea to enter into the fountain, since it's a really complex angle for the car, but it worked. I kept hitting into things at first, however, which was really frustrating. So I turned on debug collision and saw what it actually was. Once I got the angle down, I just held X and left stick and victory. I was then curious about how the game would handle stacking cars on top of each other, as cars have very weird collision. So here we go, one car, and then let's add another one. Okay, to be honest, I'm surprised this even works. It's kind of sliding off, but still. Okay, 
three cars. Or, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> Gravity is fighting against us here, but you know what? Let's just make it six cars. Why not? No, actually, let's make it 12 cars. Yeah, I don't think the game enjoyed that very much. <laughs> let's move on. Now, something that's pretty interesting in Dead Rising is that you can throw some items while others you can't, because guns can aim, or they throw their own projectiles like soda cans, whatever. But what if we were to trick the game into throwing any item we wanted? Would there be an item that reacts strangely to being thrown, like the shotgun? So let's try it. Well. It's a lot more bouncy than I thought it'd be, but it works. Hell, it could even break glass, unlike food items, so the shotgun clearly has its own weight value to it, for whatever reason. And while we're on the subject of throwing things, I tried to throw the soda cans completely, and it worked. And it also got stuck in the ceiling. <laughs> Then I also tried throwing a stack of plates instead of one at a time, which was pretty hilarious because the entire stack smashed into pieces. I then tried throwing the whole stack of gems, which for whatever reason is extremely bouncy. Like even more bouncy than the soccer ball. It also can't break glass, so it's like throwing a soft sponge at Mach 5. Now, going back to vehicles, stacking them was interesting, but what if we spawned multiple cars inside each other using the exact same coordinates? And oh my god. Okay, I was not expecting it to become a cannon. Let's get another angle of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, now, that also got me interested in spawning just average items inside each other as well, and I think the best would be spawning a group of cones, then hitting them with a bowling ball, or never mind. I guess the MT Framework Engine can't do merged items, it'll just explode them outwards. Oh well. Now, I was also wondering, how does a vehicle react when it hits multiple game objects? Because in Leisure Park, there's a few things you can hit with the car, such as garbage bins, propane tanks, but none of those really stop the car. It just seems to drive through anything effortlessly, or does it? A car should never normally be able to hit a bench, so I decided to spawn like a million, and um, holy shit. Well, I can tell you that the car does not make it through the barricade of benches, but that's not even what's interesting here. It's just how well the engine is handling this many colliding objects. I jumped into the pile and ended up getting stuck, so I had to free myself with a modded shotgun. This was pretty cool. I then tried to use that group spawner code on propane tanks, and it worked, but it was extremely laggy for some reason. But all was fine until I shot it and my hair literally disappeared. Yep. And I think that's the perfect way to end this video. There's obviously so many things you could do with the game's engine, but I think we pinpointed the most interesting of which. I hope you enjoyed some Wacky Dead Rising physics engine destruction. Thanks for watching, and as always, subscribe for more.